Okay, we are back with the second part of the TBSS processing. So we just covered tools one and two, some erosion of the images, and also some registration parameters for warping, which we will now cover with TBS tool number three. And after that, we will then project all that onto a skeleton with TBSS4. So let's get right into it. Uh, again, remember, I'm, I'm running all of these from this top-level directory. We're, we're one directory above this FA directory containing everything that we've done so far. Okay, so if I were to run TBSS3, notice it only has two options. One is capital S, which you drive the mean FA and the mean FA skeleton, which is roughly where we're going to be doing the analysis of our DTI data. It's going to drive that from the mean of all subjects in the study. And capital T means use a template provided by FSL. Uh, either one of these is fine. I mean, I always use the recommended one, but you know, you can use whatever you want, um, compare, just do whatever. I don't think it's that big of a deal. So if I did run that, again, this takes a long time, and I already have this all, all processed. But if I were to do that, we'd have this new directory right here called stats. So now we're starting to fill in things like what is the mean FA skeleton, okay? And it's also going to merge all of our different FA maps so that we can compare each of them against this skeleton that we've just created. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to overlay this this skeleton that we just made, or the, the, sorry, the, the mean FA map on top of a standardized template, just to make sure that the registration went okay and nothing went horribly, uh, terribly, horrifically wrong. So I'm going to use the MNI152T1. That's a good template. That's a space that was registered to, so we should be able to, to see it there. And I'm going to use the color scheme of red minus yellow, which is just like a heat map. And the boundaries of the intensities, 0.2 to 0.6, is pretty good. And so once we load that up, we're just going to compare this white matter mask on top of this template. Looks pretty good, seems to follow these white matter pathways pretty well. Doesn't seem to encroach too much on things like CSF or gray matter, so this looks pretty good so far. And the last thing that we're going to inspect from the output of the TBSS3 command is this merged image of all the FA maps. So we simply merged all the FA maps of all these different subjects in our study. Okay, here it's only six people, but you would do it for everybody in your own study. Okay, so it could be it could be a lot. And again, we're going to use a slightly different color scheme, green, and uh, same boundaries, 0 0.2 to 0 0.6. But the important thing is we'll be able to scroll through each one of these different subjects. So if I highlight all FA, okay, notice in green this is traced out the skeleton, right? And it's traced out a good representation of where these white matter tracks are. If I highlight all FA, notice volume zero is the first subject in that. So as I click through it, I'm going to be seeing how does it overlay on top of each of my subjects, okay? And it seems to do a pretty good job. So we're just making sure that it's going to be a good candidate for doing a group level analysis. That it's actually going to be looking at white matter and not something else. That's too crazy. All right, so the final TBSS step before doing our GLM is TBSS4, naturally enough. And all this is going to do is basically it works the way any other kind of thresholding does, like thresholding for masks, uh, thresholding for brain extraction. We're trying to just get a good sense and be, be as sensible as we can about where we're going to be doing our statistics. So this is going to further threshold that skeleton, and it's also going to be doing some... Uh, some distance estimation of the skeleton. So uh, not to get into too much detail, but basically it's just going to make sure that there's not going to be any strange connections between different parts of the white matter which should not connect. Okay, so let's say I ran that and I used the recommended, recommended threshold of 0.2. Again, this stuff gets sent back into the stats directory, and we're going to take a very brief look at it. Okay, so the output from this is going to be this all FA skeletonized data set. And again, once we have that, we're going to look through each subject just to make sure that nothing looks too out of whack, that there's relatively good alignment, and that the values seem to be sensible, that there's nothing too extreme here. So, you know, we could highlight one, one voxel within this tract right here, say, you know, 
it has an intensity of 0.7. And as we go through each of these different subjects, just make sure you know there's nobody that's a huge outlier. Obviously, there's going to be some variability, but in general, you know, just make sure this looks fine. Uh, you could turn on movie mode if you want. Actually, let's slow it down. A little. Just, just, just chill with this, okay? So I, I selected options. We're going to go to the MISC tab, and let's make the frame rate 500 milliseconds. So if we turn that on again, you know, this is just another way that you can look at each subject. If you have a lot of people, that beats that beats just uh, click it on each of that individually. So anyway, those are the TBSS tools, and now we're ready to, to do uh, randomize and also creating a design matrix and a contrast vector, which we can use to compare these two different groups that we have and analyze any differences in their tractography. That's what we'll get to in the next tutorial. But these first four steps should be pretty straightforward, especially since they're labeled very easily, I mean very sensibly. Just in increasing order, you do one, then two, then three, then four. It really generates the entire directory structure for you. And as long as you just look at the data after each step and make sure nothing went too out of whack, this will put everything in a good, uh, a good place for doing your, uh, your actual analysis. Okay, so hope that helps. I will see you guys in the next tutorial, and we'll finish up this sample data set with FSL.